C-Class Sport Coupe was Mercedes-Benz's first foray into the small hatchback market. Before that, they only ever did big luxury saloon cars and coupes. By many people at the time, it was seen to undermine Mercedes-Benz's ethos, you know, the way they did things. It was all about big, luxurious cars, and this little upstart came along and uh, sort of changed Mercedes-Benz's lineup forever, really. So the question is, is it any good? First of all, it's not actually that small. The wheelbase is exactly the same length as the C-Class because underneath this car is the C-Class saloon of that time. Now this car was sold from 2001 through till 2008 and then it very briefly became the CLC. Now of course it's got that coupe shape, as you can see it's, it, it tapers down at the back and then there's basically no back end of it, so it's kind of like a fastback as well. It's a, it's a hatchback, fastback, coupe, it's everything. But it does give it a, a very practical rear end and, and the boot size for example is very close to uh, what you would get in a Mark 1 Ford Focus, which was, of course, the hatchback competition at the time. With that long wheelbase, and also the wheels are at the far corners of the car, you get a good combination of a car that still feels like quite a big car, and at the same time, it's a pretty comfortable cruiser as well, because it, again, that wheelbase gives it that, that comfort on the motorway. Now, around town, as I'm driving around now, it's got pretty sort of meaty, sporty steering. The ride is actually pretty good, and compared to the, the car that I own, the, the CLK, uh, which is of the same generation. Now that car has big 18 inch wheels on it. This car has got 17s, but it feels really not too bad at all, quite comfortable. The only uh, thing is that these sports seats are very hard compared to the seats you get in like a, an E-Class or uh, the CLK. Of course, it's got the five speed automatic gearbox, the 5G Tronic. It was available with a manual, but hardly any are. You're probably looking at 10% manuals. Uh, all the rest are autos. And of course, it's really smooth, it, it changes uh, kind of mostly when you want it to. It's, Mercedes are very good at doing the uh, automatic gearbox. Now of course Mercedes-Benz didn't break with tradition completely because this car is still rear wheel drive which uh, gives it that sort of sporting credentials that you might hope from a, from a car like this. It does give it a more enjoyable experience with the handling and a little uh, thing about rear wheel drive cars as well which is, goes on unmentioned quite a lot is that the turning circle is always really really good in a car like this and uh, this car is no exception you can turn around in quite a small small spot thanks to the big angle of the, the wheels something mercedes uh, were sort of priding themselves on in the design of this car when it came out is the, the split rear window when you've got like a, a small section of like a see-through plastic or something like below the main rear screen and that is supposed to help with visibility but to be honest the visibility uh, through the back of this car is, is not great. Just like the Honda Civic of 2006, you've got this built-in spoiler that cuts through the middle of the rear screen and that kind of obscures part of the uh, traffic behind you. Fortunately, now it was an optional, optional extra, you've got this massive panoramic sunroof over the, uh, the top of the car which is really, really nice and it really lifts, especially when you sat in the back as we'll find out, it really does lift the interior um, makes it feel much more spacious. This must have been one of the first cars really to have such a massive piece of glass on the roof because panoramic sunroofs now they're in, they're in a lot of different cars aren't they but back then that must have been quite unusual and quite a, a, an exciting feature to have on a car. In fact to, to tell you about the back I'll just ask backseat JJ uh, what, what's it like back there mate? The, uh, the long wheelbase um, it gives you loads of room for a small car, I've got pretty decent knee room. I mean, if my posture was a bit better, my head would be touching the top, but um, yeah, it's, it, with the panoramic sunroof, you've got this really nice view of everything, like from the back here, so it feels really sort of spacious. And then this, this glass here, you can't open it, which is a bit of a shame. There's some little cubby hole things here by the sides of the seats, and you can get like a smartphone in there. I've got a little ashtray back here. I've got ventilation coming out the, the back of the center console. The seats fold 60, 40, so you can fit even more stuff in this car. It is actually a very practical car. It's definitely a four-seater. Technically, the, there is like somewhere you could sit here, but I don't think there's any middle belt, and there's a massive transmission tunnel as well. Well, yeah, thank you very much for that, man. Appreciate it.
this interior is another place where it kind of got a bit mixed up in terms of is it a sports car or is it a practical hatchback because the cubby holes are kind of few and far between. You've got a, a very small door pocket. You've only got one small cup holder which doesn't fit the fat bottom bowl. That just cannot fit in there, but it does fit one little takeaway cup. So you can get one coffee. Club box is a reasonable size. You've got the CD changer in there and it's got um, a little cubby hole here in front of the gear stick, which is, you know, you can fit a few things in. And then the centre console is pretty decent. It's like a trick, it's like a magic trick. You can put up in, up in the top part, you can fit like a phone or something, and then depending on which lever you pull, you'll either get the big compartment or the small compartment on the top. The first thing that lets this car down a bit is the quality of this interior. Now, they did facelift it and they did change it um, probably around 2005, 2006. They put the much nicer, more modern interior in. But this one, um, it's very sort of like cheap plastic feeling, a little bit creaky. It doesn't look amazing, but it's certainly by no means bad, but it's just not maybe what you'd expect from a Mercedes-Benz. The instruments in front of me, they're kind of funny. You've got like the classic old school Mercedes style uh, circular bit in the middle with the speed going around it, it takes up a large amount of the dashboard. Uh, and then you've got this multifunction display in orange underneath which does all of your different things like your mpg and your mileage and your the temperature and another funny thing about this interior is the the number of blanking plates now that's very common for mercs of this time my, my clk is no different there's just hundreds of spaces for things that this car could have but doesn't <laughs> you know presumably you can get like heated seats and things on there but there are actually too many blanking plates for the things that you could get which is terrible like it means that even if you spec this car right out to the maximum there'd still be empty buttons there and that's not really not really on is it Merck. Good news is despite this being Mercedes's smallest offering at the time it does feel like a Mercedes-Benz. I mean I'm comparing that uh, to my car the CLK and you know, the Mercs that I've driven it's got all that same quirky features like the weird handbrake which you put it on with your foot your left foot and you take it off with your right hand. It, it frees up a bit of space in the centre console it was before they introduced things like the electronic handbrake it's easy to forget that it's on like uh, the amount of times i've driven off in my car with that on is just uh, you know countless it's got like the twisty stalk that just does everything it's like um it's like that game bop it if anyone remembers that from about 20 years ago uh, twist it pull it shake it Flick it. <laughs> it does everything uh, wipers the, the full beam the indicators uh, it doesn't do the lights, the lights are down here on the right, but it's also got cruise control which is always very easy to use on this little stalk. It's got a very nice sort of smooth action to it. They managed to make the cruise control feel really nice, uh, actually better than most other buttons and switches in this car. Uh, please remember to uh, smash that like button or alternatively just press the like button, um, that will be much appreciated. There were a bunch of different engine options in this car, ranging from some quite feeble engines, four-cylinder, non-supercharged non engines, right through to like the compressor, the 230 compressor, which this one is, this is the sweet spot engine in my opinion, and then uh, you had the V6 uh, 3.2 and later 3.5. This compressor engine with the Seath 230, it's got 192 horsepower and despite the fact that it's still just a 1.8 litre engine, it goes really well and of course the supercharged power, there's no, no delay to it, it just goes. Um, it's got like a, a good amount of torque at all levels and you don't really get that from many engines these days because most things are, are turbocharged so it, it does give it that sort of sporting uh, characteristics. The fuel economy is going to suffer if you drive it uh, how it wants to be driven but you know you you can get like 30 mpg average out of it. This car is slightly lighter than my CLK, so about 100 kilos less at 1400 kilos, so the mpg is going to be okay. But there were also a couple of diesel options, uh, the C200 and the C220, both with a 2.1 litre diesel engine with various power levels. That's a good option if you want something economical, and it's diesel before the time of all the extra added rubbish that they put on them, so they're fairly reliable. So now that I'm just kind of cruising along on this open straight road, 50 miles an hour, there's not much wind or road noise. It feels like a pretty pretty comfortable car. I've got my armrest here, my nice big armrest here. So it, it's certainly uh, capable of doing distance. It's not quite on the same comfort level as the CLK, but it's, it's really not too bad at all. I just want to say a big thank you to Chris for lending me this car because this car is one that I've, I've seen on the roads quite a lot and I've just thought, I really want to know how these drive. They're such an unusual and, and strange sort of 
uh, idea. It's an interesting combination of cars all built into this one car because it's it's a quite a practical car with its decent hatchback boot and uh, cubby holes and space in the rear. Uh, but also, it's a, a pretty a pretty good to drive car. You know, it, it handles quite well, but it's also a relaxing and, and, and good long distance cruiser. So. All of those things in this one package is, is, is definitely a car worth looking into if you want something a little bit unusual. You have to kind of enjoy the looks of this car, I think. Uh, it's kind of strange looking, but at the same time, compare that to the BMW Compact at the time, and this car's a much better, much more cohesive and uh, nice design. Thank you to you guys for watching. If you want to see another video on another car, then please do click up there, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.